This is video number 16 for Computer Science 1124. We are analyzing bubble sword every which way up and down and every which way but loose. And so far, we've talked about what to expect in the best case, which is a bit artificial, because what point is there in sorting a list that's already in order? Well, the point is, we know we're not going to be able to do any better than that. So whatever the best case tells us what to expect, uh, we know that that's, uh, that's the bottom line. The worst case is more interesting because it says, uh, don't worry, it's not going to get any worse than that. So we know we're going to be between those somewhere, or at least we expect we are. I say we know. I mean, the point of algorithm analysis is to sort of make predictions and then see whether or not those predictions are actually accurate in practice. So that's what we're going to do this time. I'm going to call these bubble sort test trials. These are our lab experimental results. And to get lab experimental results, you've got to try it out on the machine. You've got to have an algorithm implementation and run it. And let's see. I'm going to, over here, this is going to take up the whole whiteboard. I just know it is. Over here, I'm going to put capital N, which uh, will be the list sizes that I try out. <clears throat> now, you don't have it yet, but attached to the email that has these video links, probably, will be another version, <coughs> pardon me, another version of the bubble sort algorithm that's um, with a main program that allows you to choose a size for a randomly generated list. So rather than, if you want to try it out and say, oh, I wonder what it does with a list of size 10,000. You don't have to type in 10,000 numbers, thank goodness. You could just say 10,000, and the program will automatically generate a list of 10,000 randomly scrambled integers for you to try out with your bubble sort and see how well bubble sort does with it. So there are all kinds of experiments we can do. I'm going to pretend that we're running with data set sizes 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500, for lack of any creativity whatsoever. And those are certainly not necessarily the best choices to use. You'll, when you're running your own time trials to see what happens, <coughs> I've got something in my throat. You'll probably want to use very different numbers. I mean, use some extreme ones, some that are really small, some that are really large, and just see what sort of dramatic results you can sort of extract from your experiments with this program. Now, here's some things to compare it to. Order n means uh, we would expect the runtime and also the number of comparisons that have to be performed to increase directly proportional to n. So if it took 100 comparisons for size 100, we would expect it to take 200 for size 200. See how boring best case is now? The more interesting case is the n squared case. n squared is what we're proportional to if it's the worst case. To get n squared, you just multiply these numbers over here by themselves. 100 squared is 10,000. 200 squared is 40,000. 300 squared is 90,000. 400 squared, 160,000. And 500 squared is 250,000. Now, almost all of this discussion is going to be sort of hypothetical. If you were to choose these as the values of the size of the list, then this is what n squared would be. But it's going to, of course, vary with perhaps every person in the class, depending on what different data set sizes they try. Now, the reason this is going to take up the whole board is because the test trials, to see what the results look like dramatically, I'm going to graph this. And in spite of what it looks like on your computer screen, that is a perfectly straight vertical line, just as this is a perfectly straight horizontal line. Across the bottom, what I want to plot against plot, what I want for my x-axis are actually the size of the lists. I want to see what happens to the runtime or perhaps the number of comparisons as I run it with all these different data sizes. So I need to chop this off into a scale of at least five, one, two, three, four, five, where they correspond to those data set sizes. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And this is n. And n, in the case of this algorithm we're looking at right now, 
is the list size. Now, what's on the y-axis? On the y-axis, I'm going to quit just making up time intervals and all that kind of stuff and just say, we'll, we'll just count how many comparisons are required on a list of that size to get it put in order using our bubble sort algorithm. So it looks like I'm going to need to go all the way up. For the worst case, it could be something close to 250,000 comparisons that have to be done in the worst case, which is going to be that 500 over there. In other words, with 500 elements in my list, I can, not that this is much consolation, I can expect that it's going to take, oh, it's going to be less than 250,000 comparisons. Good grief, that's still a lot. But well, way up here at the top, I'll put 250,000. And I'm leaving the commas out for a reason if you wonder what's going on there. And now somehow or another, I've got to divide this into five chunks as well for each of these. Well, not necessarily for each of those, but just so that I have a linear scale here. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll say that those are all evenly spaced. So if that's 250,000, then this must be 50,000 down here. And I'm working up in increments of 50,000. Again, this is a hypothetical specific example. Your actual graph that you'll need for project four and your actual values of n those could be wildly different, and you will definitely need more values of n. But anyway, I've got 50, then 100,000, then 150,000, and 200,000. And that's a linear scale. So if I wanted to uh, graph the best case scenario, I'm going to do RGB if I can. Red. The best case would be on a list of size 100, we only need 100 comparisons. On a list of size 200, we only need 200 comparisons. And you know what? On a scale where the first notch is 50,000, this is not going to make it very high. It's almost going to be flatlined down here because 100, if I go up 100, that's almost not going to show. When I draw the line to connect those points, it's barely, well, it's not going to have a blip at the end. It's barely going to rise at all. Well, it's not going to go down either. You know what? This will be the this third time is charm. I'll get over here and be try to be intentional about it. It's gradually going up, but it's a straight line. It's gradually going up to 500 over here, and that's that's going to be way more than 500 on this scale. But you get the idea. This is for order in, which is my best case. Order in. Best. Now it's not impossible. Since the numbers are being generated randomly, it's not impossible that it randomly generates a list that's already in order of 500 elements. Fat chance of that. I'll tell you what, if it does do that, then please run out and buy a Powerball ticket, and I'm good for half of the price of the ticket. How's that? We'll, we'll go have these on it. But if you accidentally generate a random list that's in order, then it's going to be close to this line, but please don't get your hopes up for that. Let's uh, go the other extreme. R, G, dark green. This is this should be an upper limit. What we're going to do, where the plan is, I probably should have mentioned this. We're going to try to figure out what the best could possibly be down that far. Fewer, fewer, fewer comparisons, and what the worst could possibly be up to two hundred fifty thousand comparisons. The n squared table column says what one thousand. Well, that's still <laughs> that's hardly going to register at all. Then that's. That's not 1,000, that's 10,000. Okay, that's, a, that's one fifth of that. So about right there. 40,000, that's almost up to the 50,000. So I go over 200 on my list size n and go up 40,000 on my scale, which is right there. Then I go over 300 and up 90,000. So that's going to be almost to 100,000. So I go over here to 300. I'm going to have to get in front of you for a minute. 300 up and then almost to 10,000, I think is going to be about right there isn't it? And then 400, 400, I go up to 160,000, which is a little above 150,000. So here's the 400 list size, and I will go up to just a little above 150,000, and here we are. And then the last one that I've got, my uh, experimental list size uh, last, is 500. 500 goes all the way up to 250, and that's why I chose this scale. The, the, the uh, markings that you use, the scale that you use, 
for your x axes and y axes are going to depend on what data you were trying, what data set sizes, list sizes you were trying. But mine has to go up to 250,000, about 500. If I connect all those, first of all, we'll notice that is not a straight line. Whoops. I'll move the point. There we go. That is not a straight line. That is n squared. But here's what we can expect. Since this is order n, the best case, and since this is order n squared, also known as our worst case scenario, worst, we can expect that when we do our experimental observations and run some data, that we're going to get something between those two. Will we? Will we not? Well, that's what we're doing in project four. We're going to find out whether that works or not. I am going to pretend another column over here and say that these are my observed comparison counts. O, B, S, E, R, B, E, D. Observed comp counts. Let's say that I actually did run it with my program. Now, it's list size 100. There's almost no chance that that's going to be completely in order. But you know what? There's almost no chance it's going to be completely backwards either. So I don't really expect to see 100 as the number of comparisons. And I don't expect to see 10,000 either. I can expect to see something in between. And maybe I'm going to pretend to expect to see something like 7,540. And I just made that number up. Actually, I did run this program. And I thought, you know what, I'll give them an actual real life example. But here's what happened. When I ran this, I didn't remember exactly what this observed comparison count column looked like. And when I ran it, ran it, I saw a pattern that was very interesting. I don't want to take all your fun away. So I'm going back to pretend numbers. Pretend that I ran it with 100 elements and it got me 7540 comparisons. Oh, that was so much fun. Let's pretend again. I pretend to run it with 200 and I pretend to get 27,311. These are not terribly far off from what I actually observed, but they're enough off that when you run it yourself, you're gonna see what I mean. You're, you're gonna see what little pattern I'm talking about here. Pretend I ran it with 300 and I got, what did I get? 66,590. Whoops, I'm not supposed to be putting commas. 66,590. And when I ran it with 400, <clears throat> pardon me. Oh no, I didn't put a pretend value down. Let me hurry up and make a pretend value. I'm going to pretend that it's going to be roughly 16 times that. I don't know how to do the math there. It's going to be roughly, um, uh, you know what? I did make up a value for the last one. I'll squeeze it in between. 198, 432. He struggles to make up numbers. I don't want to make up something that's going to be completely out of range. Let's see, going from 66 to 590, I'm going to pretend uh, 112, 700. There, that's between 400 and 1,600. Uh, no, 160,000. Now, why would I even be interested in those? Well, now here's where I didn't put the commas. Because I want to graph those points, and just to make it dramatically obvious what's going on in the graph, I'm also going to put next to each point that I plot for my observed comparison counts, I'm going to actually put the coordinates of that point. Here's what I mean. Go over 100 and up 7540. Over 100 and up 7540 would be about right there, we'll say. Over 200 and up 27,311. 27,311 is a little above halfway up there. About right there. Uh, what? Uh, at 300, we go up 66,590. 66,590 is going to be not quite half this way. Is that right? 66,590. About right there. Uh, 112,700 for 400. 112,700 for 400 would be, we'll say about right there. And then the last one. Make believe this many comparisons. 198,432 for 500. 198,432, all the way up here, not quite 200,000. Now, we'll also want to connect those dots to see how our experimental results compare to somewhat of our expectations. 
Yes, you are going to get something that looks a lot more like n squared than you are order n. Isn't that how life is, though? I mean, things turn out to be closer to the worst case than they are the best case. There, a philosophy lesson for the day. Let's get philosophical. Now, uh, here's why I didn't put commas. I want to put the coordinates of these points just to show that I am plotting experimental data. And there's a comma. 100 for the x-axis, 75.40 for the y-axis. See what I'm doing here? This point, I went over 200 and up 27.311. Over 200 and up 27.311. This point, I went over 300. I know that without looking. And went up 66,590. The extra commas would, would make it look like I had an order triple rather than an order pair, and that would be confusing. Over here, I went up 400. No, I didn't. I went across 400, and I went up 112,700. Last but not least, far from least, I went over 500 and went up 198,432. Now remember, remember the reason this blue line, I fully expected it to come between this really low dark red line down here and the somewhat high dark green line up here is because those are boundaries. Those are the best case and the worst case scenario for bubble sort. So I would expect my experimental results to fall somewhere in between. I don't necessarily know that I can expect it to look like order n squared. Maybe that's the lie that I'm telling you with my made up numbers, he he he, my evil master plan. Maybe it's more like a straight line. Maybe it's curved even more. Maybe it's wildly dramatic and it actually crosses one of these lines or the other. Whoa, that would invalidate all of this algorithm analysis we've been doing up to that point. So I kind of hope that doesn't happen when you run it with your data sets, but who knows? That's random. That's randomly scrambled, scrambled list. This is the entire graph. I've got the best case, the worst case, the observed case. They're all in one graph, so I can compare them all. And that's it. We have analyzed bubble sort to the nth degree, to the n squared degree, and I don't think there's anything else to say about it. So I'll just shut up right here and say I'll see you online.